They say that if you put an infinite number of monkeys and typewriters in a room, you would end up with something amazing, and of course a lot of monkey poo. In America, I wondered if I could get a bunch of bankers to come up with a numerical equivalent. Uh, thank you very much for coming out and doing this. Uh, let me explain what uh, we're going to do. There's a, a popular game we have in England, I don't know about you guys here, of guessing how many pieces of candy there are in a jar. Does that ring any bells to you guys? Yeah. Or sweets, as we call it. That's, uh, excellent. Okay, well, that's, this is what we're going to do. You will work in different areas of kind of accounting and maths-related, number-related work, which is kind of, these are the skills that I want to draw on for what we're going to do here. So, uh, bearing that in mind, can we just nominate one of you who uh, I'm just going to put to one side for the moment and uh, who's going to have a a special job. <laughs> okay, let's just get, let's get nicely pushed forward. Can we get a mic on you? Let me explain uh, what your role is here. There's a board and sort of easel just over there. You're going to be writing down people's estimates. Um, the reason why we're doing it like this is that if any of you see or hear what other people are choosing before you, it does tend to influence you and it makes you sort of gear your own estimations towards what other people uh, have said prior to you. So please do so quietly and don't come back and discuss your figures with anybody else. Amy, you also get to go first, all right? So you please come and have a look at the jar. Take a moment and have your guess. When you've got a number in your head, just let me know if you've got something. Yes. Great. If you head over here for me, then. This will be our writing area. You take the pen, put your own number at the top. Okay. You'll be person number one. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Let's go with the lady there in the middle. Great. And off you go. And uh, somebody else step forward. Thank you. Everybody done it? Okay. Quite a wide range of numbers. Um, it's a very deceptive thing. The correct number of sweets in the jar uh, is 136. It is only 136. Nowhere near as high as it, as it looks. Partly because there's something else in the jar, which I'm going to take out in a second. Anybody get close to that? <laughs> oh, somebody got 100. Who got 136? Was that you? Oh, congratulations. Let's just get a mic on you. What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca, come forward for me. Thank you, Rebecca. Good. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank Let's you. just come around here. There is a couple of other things going on here. First of all, I'm interested in the sort of the psychology of this and how people make their estimations and how they do this. And there's a certain sort of person that tends to do this better than other sorts of people. And also, I got a chance just to have a look at you guys earlier. Right? Just if you t take the lid off. Sorry, do you want to just grab all of that for me? Um, thank you. Um, if you reach inside there, and just you need to reach in the sweets a bit and pull out, there's a uh, sort of a scroll. Great, you want to open that up for us? Now you've got to read this out in your nicest, clearest voice. From the top. There is a certain type of person who I think will estimate the correct number with the greatest accuracy. Firstly, it will be a woman, not a man. I also expect this to be someone who works in the field of brokerage. Her and dress is, sense. Is, is that true? Yes. Okay. Her dress sense will suggest a sharp mind, simply simple, simple colors, and probably bright colored shoes. <laughs> Jewelry will be silver and uncluttered, maybe a large ring. There will be at least one other accountant in the family, probably on her mother's side. From looking around the group, I think it will be the girl with the ponytail and the green army style top. Um, the, um, <laughs> are those things right? They're all correct. Yes? Yes. Accountant, another accountant in the family? Yes. Mother's side? Or? Yes, my mother. You got a cat as well? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I, I didn't, didn't want to write that in case that was wrong. <laughs> well, fantastic. And look, look, for the record, we didn't speak to you beforehand and ask you to no, tell you how many not. were in there or ask you to do any of that. And you haven't told us any of these things either? No, I have not. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much I'm indeed. I'm quite but, impressed. Well, <laughs> thank please you Please do hear, Rebecca. The rest of you don't feel despondent, even though some of your estimates were terrible. Um, <laughs> there is there's another side to this which interests me, which is, um, for those of you that... Uh, well, actually, taking all of you as a group, aside from one person who got it spot on, which I wasn't imagining you'd get it dead on, but you did, which is, which is sensational. Um, could you just bring the board back over? Let me get, a, get you a calculator. You're going to need this. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to take what you as an overall group would have done if you were one entity. If we saw you as one entity, what estimate you would have come up with. So we're going to take the mean of the numbers that you've got. So if you take the calculator there for me, you're going to add up all of those numbers and uh, tell us the grand total. That sounds about right then. Okay, so the total is 2,856. Um, and there are 21 people here, so do you want to divide that number by 21? So we'll end up with the mean of the group. 136. 136, which is what you got. Yes. Which is the correct amount of sweets in the jar. <laughs> so, so, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> It was unbelievable that he knew everything about her. Just like dead on because I know her and it's just right on. It's unreal. I feel very comfortable estimating anything now uh, since I know I might actually get it right. 135, 136. In America's New York, I use my award-winning powers to plant a word in the slightly smaller American brain without anybody knowing how. Guys, you're free for a couple of minutes. Do you want to come and do this? Sure. It's a kind of a mind reading okay. uh, sort of experiment. Um, I need you to call somebody that you know. Okay. All right. Uh, does your cell phone have a, a speakerphone? <laughs> it does? Yes. Excellent. Good. Do you want to get someone on? The, is there somebody you can call you think will be in? Okay. Right. What's this person's name? Joe. Okay. Well, if Joe isn't in, we can try someone else. Yeah. Is that on speaker at the moment? Yeah. Right, cool. Actually, if you want to hold it, if you hold it in your hand like that, then we'll both be able to hear it, and then Mike will be able to pick it up. Too. Joe? Yeah? Okay, just stay on the line and talk to me, okay? All right. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Uh, my name's Darren Brown. I'm a, I'm a kind of English psychological illusionist, if that makes any sense. And I want to try a, a kind of a mind-reading experiment with you, all right? All right. I need to ask you a few questions, Joe. I need to know a few things about you. Please be honest. How old are you, Joe? I'm 18. 18, fantastic. <coughs> and uh, do, are you a student? Do you work? or? I'm a student. Um, what, what do you study? What, what do you, are you at school or what, what do you major in? I actually go to culinary school. Culinary school, thank you. That's really interesting. Great. All right, listen, so I'm going to write something down here. I'm not going to show uh, Jessica or any of these guys what it is. Um, I'm going to ask you to be doing three things in a moment, all right? Joe, let me just explain. You're going to be uh, writing a word in your mind on like a big chalkboard. Uh, you're going to be saying the words yourself over and over again. And then you're also going to try and do the whole thing without really thinking about it, all right? So that's three different kind of cogs that are going to be going round in your mind at the same time, all right? But let me just, uh, let me just write something here first. Okay. Okay, cool. Joe, I need you to imagine that you are, uh, you know, six years old back in elementary school, all right? And imagine you're picking up a piece of chalk. Okay. Then you're going to start writing a word very large and clear on this chalk board, and then just tell me when you're done. All right, I'm done. You're happy that was a, a free choice of word, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. See, I've written something here, and you won't be able to see what I've written, but hopefully you'll be able to tell by Jessica's reaction as to whether it's at all close. What was the word that you wrote? Bicycle. Bicycle. Tricycle! Oh! <laughs> yeah. Not bad! Oh, tricycle, yeah? That was one wheel out, tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thanks for your help. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. I thought he was going to be completely wrong and it'd be like a complete sham, but then like he got tricycle. I'm pretty amazed, actually. I think he's psychic. Like, there's no other explanation for it, because how else would you know it? <laughs> so, despite my winning three Olivier Awards and four BAFTAs, Madame Tussauds in London still refused to do one of me as if they couldn't melt down Alan Titchmarsh and add a goatee. So, to show them what an asset my presence there would be, I had a go at being a waxwork for a day. So as you stand there, looking at me, and just with the sound of my voice right there in the center of your head and floating all the way around you, even though you know that it's just a mannequin, 
just a doll stood there. You can absolutely imagine that feeling uh, coming from your feet, where your feet are at the moment, rooted into the ground. Maybe you find your eyelids growing heavy and wanting to close. And just allowing yourself to drift away, eyes open or eyes closed, it doesn't matter. And as you listen to my voice, you stand there quite still, looking at me there. And you wonder, maybe you feel fall over, but you won't fall over. You can stand quite comfortably as your mind just switches off. And it's almost like you become one of the waxworks yourself. And the more you stick, the more you notice how stuck you become. And the more you try in vain to unstick yourself, the more and more that you stick. A relaxed sticking feeling right the way through your arms and your fingertips, right the way down into your feet, rooting them into the floor. Sticking, locking, gluing, gelling, cementing, bonding, fusing and welding tighter and tighter into place as you feel yourself locking rigidly but so comfortably, comfortably into place like you just switch off and the more you try to unstick yourself harder and harder, the more you stick and the more you remain in that wonderfully comfortable stuck state as you wonder just how long you could indulge yourself for and it feels great as well. As I was looking at him, I just kind of got number and number, and I felt like my body was turning really statue-like hard. I just kind of felt really sucked in by the lights because they were like whirling around. We only caught the end bit of it, but I actually started drifting off, but then everything just stopped and was fine. The idea of vibrational energy systems existing within our bodies that can be triggered by a variety of crystals is a mainstay of New Age thinking. Do you believe in, or you know, what are your thoughts on crystal energy, crystal healing power, that kind of thing? What are, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Um, I'm kind of open on it. It wouldn't be my natural no, no. inclination. But you clearly are sort of in your heart quite sceptical about it as a... It, it's n it would never have been my port of call, no. no. I sort of don't believe in it, or certainly don't believe in a lot of it. Um, but I think, like a lot of these things, there are little nuggets of truth in it that have sort of got blown out of proportion and, and exaggerated. And with uh, crystals and so on, what it's based on is the scientific fact, if you like, that we are all molecular beings, we're all made of molecules which vibrate. Crystals also vibrate, and they vibrate at different and discrete frequencies, and sometimes those frequencies will work in harmony with or against other things that are vibrating, like us, for example, and you mm. get people that can't wear quartz watches, and it's because their own vibration, if you like, um, is sort of overwhelming this tiny bit of quartz, which is too close to their own vibration, or work, working against it somehow, and their watch consistently stops. But what's interesting about it is that you can use it the other way. If you take a larger piece of quartz, mm. you can use it to override or interfere with the person's own kind of energy flow, if you want to use that word. So look, I'll show you this, because it's really interesting. Take your two fingers, like that, as if you just lift up the uh, lift up the, the mug. Perfect, and put it back down again. So it's relatively comfortable. It, it, it's not the old angle, maybe. Yeah, fairly yeah, comfortable. That was all right. All yeah. right. Okay, good. So I want you to do the same thing, but I'm going to put one of these on the back of your hand. So you might need to just sort of try and get the back of your hand flat. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So just keep, keep that on the table for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the other aspect, what I think makes these things work, especially when you start getting into the healing end, is people's expectation that certain things yeah. are going to happen and you kind of create that yourself. Yeah. So that psychological aspect of it is important. I want you to look at the quartz, and you listen to me, and just imagine that hand becoming weaker and weaker. And as you do that, as you keep focusing on the quartz, you genuinely try and lift the mug, while at the same time you focus on that kind of energy sapping out of your hand. Really try. 
Just with those two fingers. Go on, just try. Really heavy, Vicky. What's happening as you're trying? Ridiculous, man. That's fucking Okay. Yeah. And heavy. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it. Really heavy? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So what was just as you were doing that? What did that feel like? Oh, it felt really heavy. It felt okay. Stupidly heavy. Yeah. And you're genuinely trying. You're not just helping. I was it. trying. No, no, no. I don't want to help you at all. No, no. No. So you're genuinely trying. I was. I was exerting the same amount of pressure. Try this. It works in place. Stand up. Stand up. Um, I'll stick with the same stone. So what you're going to do is yeah. you're going to put this in the other hand. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm left-handed. That's what I thought. Okay, so hold that there. Hold it. Right. Okay. So with your other hand, yeah. you're going to hold on to just the end of the pencil there. All okay. right. Now don't lift it yet. Just okay. hold it there just like that. Just hold it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, now try not to move. Okay. Okay, so what you get is a warmth coming from this, first of all, that will move along here and along this hand of the pencil. So it'll take a moment. And you have to kind of imagine it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's a sort of... Again, it's just that sort of weakness. Just gently, just, just try and lift the pencil straight up. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> try again? Stupid. <laughs> Nothing? No. You try, you're genuinely trying? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm lifting a pencil. Try again? How hard can it be? <laughs> Nothing? No, never. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Let, let go of that. I'm sweating. You are, no, you are. You're absolutely... Is that sexual energy? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's Brilliant. quite complicated. There were many, many different layers That's going on at the same time. Um, there is a form of crystal that we carry around with us all the time um, that we don't really think of as crystals, but it works on crystalline energy. And what have you got? It's a mobile phone. Have you got one on you? Yes. Okay. Now we've got your number. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. can you put that? Oh, it's one of those fans. Can you put you put it to settings for me? I've got a message. It's from me. Are you sweating? <laughs> That's. Uh, I know that. There we go. Yeah. All oh, right, great. Has it got Bluetooth on it? These Bluetooth? No. I don't mm, think so. no. no. Okay. Well, I Can't show you this because I'm I'm not supposed to know about this myself, so I don't want you knowing. Okay. All right. Okay. Take your crisps and sandwich and just hold them like that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold this on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. In a moment, I'm going to get somebody to call you. All mm -hmm. right. What you'll feel mm -hmm. is a. If I've, you should get like a prickling feeling in the back of your neck, all right? Okay. It's, it, it is safe, it's only going to be for like a minute or so, all right? When I tell you to, you're going to try and lift the plate up. Can we, uh, can we call, please? Thank you. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. Focus on the plate. Mm -hmm. Focus on it, try and lift. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> try and lift it. Uh, yeah, yeah, now keep trying, okay. keep trying, keep trying, alright? Just okay. keep focusing, I'll take okay. this, just keep focusing, keep trying to lift it. Right up, tug, hard as you can, <laughs> keep going. Excellent, thank you for that. You'll That's get a few mental. sort of malignant headaches the next couple oh, of days, cool. and then, uh, <laughs> then it'll go away. Thank you ever so much. Everything I told you about crystals and mobile phones was yeah. rubbish, alright? But right. I did need you to believe that while we were doing it. Yeah, so, of course, uh, I'm happy to believe that. Excellent, yeah. please okay. do. Thank, thank you very, very much, much indeed. All I can say is I was genuinely surprised that I thought, well, all right, I might be doing a bit of this, but I'm not fucking doing all of it, because that feels like lead now, you know? It's either true that I'm stopping it, or he's doing something mental, or we're both do you know, I don't know. Now, I've always been a big fan of Pop Idol, so I was very excited to learn that Simon Callow had agreed to come on the show. So it's never been here before? No. No. Me neither. No. There was a stately home now used as primarily an as an art gallery. Yeah, beautiful. Um, when we go in, what I've done, I, I paint, I paint uh, portraits, and right. uh, we've put some of mine up in a up in a room. We'll have a cursory look at them, and then we'll sit down and get into the thing that I, I'd like to do. Eddie. So, uh, awesome. mm. these are they. How fantastic! I love your awesome. Thank you very much. Alex. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Alex. Yes, indeed. You just got a just had a new one. <laughs> My friend. Of course, yes. And uh, your good self over there. <laughs> Very nice. A younger, more beardy incarnation. <laughs> Actually, don't look it's at like it too much for now. Nice. I've got a reason. If you take a seat, Father. Yes. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the reasons why I like painting these things is because I'm interested, in, I suppose, in how much we pick up from people's faces and how much we read, in particular from the eyes. Yes. Because there's so much that we read from a person and pick up 
at an entirely unconscious level, just purely from the eyes. And what I'd like you to do is to look at mine, and I will look at yours, and I'm going to try and transmit something to you, which will be a word. I'm going to ask you to sort of relax a bit and put your hands by your side. Second. So it's a word that I'm thinking of, which I'm going to try and send to you. Uh, it is four letters long. Right? It's not a rude word. It is four letters long. And uh, very important that at the moment we just verify that I haven't, until this point right now, given you any indication what we're going to be doing today at all. No. So I haven't asked you to consider any words, nor asked you to or put any words in your head, no. or any, anything like that at all. No. Right. Okay. It's important these things happen right now as we're talking. Good. So if I asked you what the word is that I'm thinking of, it would be impossible for you to know right now unless you just guessed, all right? Yeah. But rather than you thinking it is impossible, what I'd like you to do, Simon, is to sort of just imagine, just sort of almost sort of play the role that, it, that you did know, as if it was something easy, as if you had the ability to read my mind, so it becomes an easy thing for you, mm. uh, like a game, like a game that we're playing. Mm. So if I told you, for example, that I'm sending you the first letter now, that I'm concentrating on the first letter of this four-letter word, and instead of thinking that sounds impossible, you just go for whatever letter feels right, as if you just know the first letter, so the first letter is, what is that? Ah. Ah, oh, very good, exactly. So that's just an easy thing, just comes to your mind without you having to worry about it. So now just start to turn that in your mind into a, into a word. You've got the first letter, and there could be various four-letter words beginning with R. What's the second letter of that four-letter word? A. No, it's not. Okay, just take a second. Do keep your eyes open, but just, just reconsider that. So we're after the second letter of the word, it's not an A. I think you're just perhaps a little quick off the mark. What's the second letter? O. O. Very good. Excellent. So you've got R and O. Now there are various options, various follow-up words beginning with R and O, but what is sticking in your mind at the moment? It has nothing to do with the environment we're in, by the way. Not that I can think of anything that might be influenced by the environment. Not that you'd be aware of at a conscious level. What's you the word? You the word? Yes. Road. Road. R-O-A-D. Yes. As in a street. A road. Exactly. Yes? Not yes. R-O-D-E. R-O-A-D. No, R-O-A-D. R-O-A-D. Now, that word, as far as you're concerned, just popped into your mind as I was talking to you? Yes. Nothing you'd considered before? No. Okay. And are you aware of anything since we've met that might have influenced you? I'll just come to have another look at the painting with me, but nothing you're aware of that could have influenced you to choose that word? No. Felt entirely fair and free? Yes. Okay. I didn't give you much of a chance to look at this earlier on, uh, and I had my reasons for it. If you just come in a little bit closer, I don't know if you can see anything at all strange about it. Can you see just in the eye there? No, I can't without my glasses. Put your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> can you read it? I can. R -O -A -D. It says. R O A D. It is painted in the picture. <laughs> That's extraordinary. That's amazing. And when you saw the picture, just as you came in, you weren't consciously aware. Of, you <laughs> shouldn't. It's so faint. No, you didn't even know exactly. exactly. So exactly. you wouldn't be able to read it. Had a contact, and that really is something. It's not. You can see it's not a. It's not stuff on. That is. A, <laughs> oh, fantastic. You proved a, uh, a delightful and responsive subject. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. I had a word starting with R. It was actually the word raft. And then it sort of morphed in my mind into a road. He couldn't have got up and done it, for example, since I uttered the word. No, no way at all. Uh, it's what it is. It's there, clearly written in my right pupil. Zippo's Circus is the home to some of the loveliest people I've ever met and some of the most extraordinary performers. A high-wire artist knows the value of focusing positively at the risk of serious personal injury. And in the same way that the recurring negative thought, I mustn't lean too far over the edge, can make heights scary for many people, the thought, I must try not to fall, is precisely the wrong way to think 30 feet up in the air on a high wire, even if you're the world's best at it. Henry, how are we doing? Uh, fantastic. F amazing watching you uh, watching you do your stuff. You're in the Guinness Book of Records yes, for skipping. skipping. With the re what is that and what exactly is the record for? It's uh, the, the most skip in a minute on the high wire. With a rope? With a rope, skipping at the same time. So you've been doing this since you were 12. You're 27 now. Yeah. Have you ever fallen off doing that trick? No. no. So far, no. I'd love to see you do it again. Thank you very much. And uh, what I'd say is this. I'm going to go over here. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't worry about any of that. You just focus on not wobbling and not falling off. I'd like you to go and do that again, OK? Just make sure you don't wobble and fall off. Brilliant.
The instruction, try not to fall off, residently delivered, is amplified by the inflation of an airbag, as well as the pressure of me and the cameras watching. Henry's unconscious is, for the first time, thinking in terms of I mustn't fall off, which can only take him one way. Crazy. <laughs> it does uh, mess around with your brain up. You get this urge telling you always, jump, do it, go for it, down, down. Then you go to the other side saying, don't, stay, stay, stay. And, you know, it's, it's very hard, very hard. David's now going to act out the mind reading he imagined 20 minutes ago to see if a random member of the public will draw what he foresaw that they would. What sort of person should I be looking for? Uh, entirely up to you. I, 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 have, a, I have a blank canvas. A blank canvas? Let's do it. Maybe down here? Yes. No. No? I'm not feeling a psychic bond. <laughs> OK. There's someone. We're not rolling. Are we rolling? Excuse me. You don't have uh, five minutes to let me try and read your mind, do you? I'd love you to. Would you? Yeah. Brilliant. I found someone. What's your name? Claire. Claire, I'm David. It's lovely to meet you. This is Darren. Hello, I'm Darren. Darren He's Brown. a sort of witch. Oh, Don't worry about that. Excellent. Come up here and we'll, we'll put a microphone on you and we'll, yes. okay. and we'll do David's that. David's going to read your mind. I'm going to stand you there facing David. Okay. And David there facing yeah. Claire. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, now, this is very simple. I've been teaching David some of my mind reading skills and uh, he is in a moment going to read uh, your mind as you focus on a, a picture or an image or yeah. something. Now, I need you to start doing that now. All I'd say is, as you do it, make the image very clear, very bright, very vivid. Try not to change it and mess it around. If you happen to be thinking of like a house or a stick man, change it, think of something else. Now I'm going to ask you to draw this okay. before we do anything. David, you obviously mustn't look at what Claire draws. Not I'll just cool. get a pen and paper. Nice and large and clear, please. David, look the other way. <clears throat> and you also, as you can't tell from the sound of the pen or anything. I can't uh, hear well, anything. You can't even hear anything now. I can, I've got quite good at this. <laughs> but I have no idea. Okay, I've got Done. it. Done, no, just, yeah. just hold the whole thing up against yourself. Right, can David turn back around now? Lovely. Oh, well, you don't dip dirty fingers. Lovely. OK. OK. All right, here we go. So, Claire, you're focusing on the image. Now start sending that picture across. And at the same time, in your mind, just screen the name of the thing okay. over and over again. Make that image, Claire, really big and bold and bright. Now, David, as you're doing this, are you getting a sense of animal, vegetable or mineral? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's living. I think it's a living thing. All right. Now, don't, don't say yes or no, but okay. you've given away a nice, probably a nice yes then from that. And I think it's... I think it's a furry animal, uh, like a like a pet, and it's yeah. I yeah. think I think I know what it is. I think it's a cat. Uh, is it? Can we? Can it... Yeah, it is. Hello? This is the worst drawing ever, but it definitely means a cat. <laughs> That's really good. Well That's done. really good. <laughs> it's appalling. That's, I'm supposed to be an art student. It's not. Claire's a fine art student. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What year? <laughs> um, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank I'm going to ask you a few much. questions about it, so just stay put for a second. Okay. Uh, well done, though. Congratulations. Let's check okay. out. I can't understand possibly at all how he would have been able to grab that from me. Well, it was pretty strange when he said that it was, he thought it was something furry. It was quite difficult for me not to laugh, actually, just because I couldn't believe he'd actually got it. So this is Claire's drawing, which is quite freaky. Well, I'm just going to show you, because I'm really quite freaked out by this. <laughs> There's not much to choose between them, really. It's the, the tail's going the same way, even the sort of slightly devilish, uh, the devil horn ears, which as I drew them, I was thinking, like, they don't look much like cat ears, but she's done exactly the same thing. But I wasn't expecting it to be quite so bang on. <laughs>